We are now getting a continuous stream of leaks on Alder Lake performance. They all show significant single core gains and IPC increases. And the multi-core scores are also very impressive with the addition of those little cores. In my last video, I wanted to know, will it have a significant impact on gaming? Will Intel take back the gaming crown? Let's get into it. We now have a Time Spy score for the i9-12900K, and the CPU score is very impressive. At 17,915, it is impressive although not record-breaking. The folks over at WCCF Tech showed a comparison of Alder Lake along with other CPUs, and when compared to AMD's 16-core Ryzen 9 5950X at 13,760, it looks to be 30% faster. What they didn't tell you is that TimeSpy can only take advantage of up to 10 threads. What they also don't point out is that in their very own chart, the 12-core Ryzen 9 5900X scores 13,055, while its predecessor in the Ryzen 9 3900X scores 12,704. So does that mean the 5900X is only 2.8% faster? If you've seen any gaming benchmarks on the 5900X, you know that it is head and shoulders above the 3900X. Even AMD's own charts show how the 5900X provides a double-digit increase in gaming performance. So don't just take this TimeSpy CPU score as it is presented to you and think it's going to provide you with double-digit gains in gaming. When Zen 3 was announced a year ago, we saw some incredible gains in single-core performance scores that just left Intel in the dust. It was the first time we saw Cinebench R20 single-core scores break 600 with a score of 631 while Intel's i9 was at just 544. However, the gaming results of Ryzen 9 ended up being much closer than the single-core scores would have suggested. The double-digit lead in single-core performance of the Ryzen 9 only led to a single-digit percentage win in gaming over the i9. So what does all of this mean? The TimeSpy CPU score is not to be taken as a strong indication of gaming performance. What it does do is to continue to reinforce Alder Lake's IPC improvements. The leak also shows a couple of benchmarks in gaming using the i9-12900K with an RX 6600. It showed Rainbow Six Siege achieving 252 frames per second at 1080p. Gamers Nexus did a review of the RX 6600 and showed a benchmark in that same game at 1080p and it showed 272 frames per second. Gamers Nexus is using a 10th gen i7-10700K clocked at 5.1 GHz all-core and it scored 20 frames per second higher. Now we don't know the settings from the leak so let's move on. The leak shows Shadow of the Tomb Raider at 112 frames per second at 1080p. Gamers Nexus is showing 119. Again, we don't know the settings from the leak. The one leak they did provide as a comparison was in Forza Horizon 4. The i9-12900K achieved 193 frames per second at 1080p, while the Ryzen 9 5950X was at 189 frames per second. So Alder Lake is 2% faster. And I suspect that when the launch day reviews go live, that the Ryzen 9 to i9 Alder Lake comparisons will show similar differences, or should I say similarities, just single digit performance differences in games. Why? At this point, I know many of you are thinking, didn't you see those amazing benchmark scores? Look at the incredible IPC increases. Yes, they are all really good. However, where are the gaming benchmarks? Does anyone remember the buildup for Rocket Lake and that Intel's 11th generation CPU was going to take back the gaming crown? The Cinebench R15 and R20 leaks showed better multi-core performance. The Cinebench R23 leaks showed better single-core and better multi-core performance. Couple that with the huge improvement over Intel's 10th generation in Comet Lake, and it was a certainty that Rocket Lake was going to take back the gaming crown. Except, it didn't. Rocket Lake launched and it provided a minimal improvement in gaming. It did not take back the crown from Ryzen. Steve over at Hardware Unboxed did a big 32-game benchmark comparing 8-core CPUs in the Ryzen 7 5800X versus Rocket Lake's i7-11700K and the previous-gen Comet Lake i7-10700K. His testing was with an RX 6900 XT at 1080p and it showed the 5800X was on average 5% faster than the 10th-gen Comet Lake i7-10700K. When compared to the 11th gen Rocket Lake i7-11700K, the 5800X was on average 4% faster. Thus, Rocket Lake closed the gap by 1% in gaming. 
all those leaks before showing impressive computing and IPC improvements. And yet, even with the RX 6900 XT at 1080p, it provided just a 1% improvement in gaming. Why? Memory latency. Intel did not use the same integrated memory controller from 10th Gen Comet Lake. No, they carried over the new integrated memory controller from Sunny Cove where they implemented the new Gear 1 and Gear 2 memory modes. The memory latencies in Rocket Lake were generally higher than in Comet Lake or any previous iteration of the Skylake architecture. You can increase the throughput within the CPU to have higher IPC, however, you also need to decrease the time to access the RAM as well. Memory latency can have a significant effect on gaming performance. By the way, if you like content like this, hit that like button and consider subscribing and let me know in the comments below if you are looking forward to Aldo Lake for better gaming performance. AMD has been working hard to reduce latency every Zen generation. One of the ways to hide the effects of latency is through the use of larger amounts of L3 cache. AMD has been increasing the cache on their CPUs every generation. And who remembers game cache? The Ryzen 9 CPUs contain 64 megabytes of L3 cache. Alder Lake is expected to increase L3 cache up to 30 megabytes, a modest increase. AMD earlier this year at Computex announced it will use a 3D vertical stacking of cache or 3D V cache on its Ryzen CPUs set to release early 2022. They claim up to a 15% improvement in gaming by adding a whopping 128 megabytes to the already present 64 for a total of 192 megabytes of L3 cache. That makes the 30 megabytes of Alder Lake look absolutely minuscule. So unless Intel has a way to improve memory latencies, like it was in Rocket Lake, it may be a bottleneck that holds back the higher IPC advantage that Alder Lake will have. And DDR5 won't be able to help until they can offer DDR5 8000 or higher. While I'm excited to see what this new hybrid architecture of Intel has to offer, I do have my doubts as to its application as a gaming CPU and a desktop. And that doubt comes from my experience in using a big little architecture in Apple's M1 since the end of last year. Should Intel rethink its desktop CPU lineup for gaming? We'll cover that next time. Thank you all so very much for watching. Stay safe, and I'll see you in the next one.